Yes. Um, of course, the slave catchers, the, the religious leaders, major part of it. Because what they have is religious plantation. Gather all our people and put them inside and keep brainwashing them. Why the enemy is doing what the enemy is doing. The Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN, we know what has happened. And we are saying, please, free our people. Stop catching them and putting them back into the slave camp. Let's allow this video and we'll continue. We'll break things down further to you. Thank you so much. Please continue to help us to share and hit the like buttons. Thank you. Yes, as debates continue to rent the air about uh, what needs to change in the Nigeria that is not working for anybody. Restructuring, shout of restructuring, debates about amendment or all kinds of uh, suggestions about what to do. There's a mischief that has been added. We saw some 60 members of uh, Nigeria's National uh, House of Representatives. But we also note that those 60 come from one part of this map behind me. And so they're saying it is by Nigeria going back to parliamentary system immediately. They want to, they are, they are creating a false narrative as if it was in, it, 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 it is the presidential system of government that has created all the problems. Let's just go back to parliamentary system. <laughs> which union are they talking about? The people, these 60 dumb heads, which union are you talking about? We are saying we have no union with you. With this fraud as basis, we are saying we have no union with you. Unless we resolve that matter, you are not talking to us in your suggestion about going to parliamentary system. Mm -hmm. There are two heavy questions you have to take. Like a, like a house, you have to buy the land, build, before you begin to talk about decoration. Parla system of government, whether uh, the, uh, uh, parliamentary or presidential, is like leaving the substantive question of disputed land. Our union is now disputed by virtue of the constitutional force majeure of 2020. Our union, we have no union with you. That's a summary of the charge that the constitution is a fraud, that the union is a fraud against us. We are not, we are not in union with you. You are imposing yourself on us and you can't be allowed. You are not going to be allowed to continue to pretend, especially when it is our signature that you inserted falsely. You inserted in forgery as basis of that constitution. So we have no union with you to be talking about parliamentary. Those two heavy questions that you have to take first, like I said, have you secured the land for the project? Have you built the house that you are now talking about whether it is uh, to be painted blue or painted red? That's what that, that discussion of uh, parliamentary is. The basic question first, go to the preamble of that constitution so you can see that we have to resolve the question whether indeed it is true that we, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having firmly and solemnly resolved to live together in unity as one indivisible, indissoluble entity. That's the first question. And it was only by a referendum of the constituent company, the people you trapped, the people you hijacked their sovereignties and conscripted into this union by this falsehood supported by brigandage. Decree is all about the brigandage. If you don't agree, we kill you. That's how we, that's, is union at gunpoint under this constitution. It is union at gunpoint. So it is when we settle the question of whether we agree, whether we want to be in federation, right? Because that constitution is dead. So we're not, we don't even have a union anymore if anybody will tell themselves the truth. And we come to the second question of the structure what Nigeria has been shouting from and bleeding from is the structure, the 36 state structure, compounded by 704 local government that, that got listed illegitimately in the constitution, so that we now have to finance 
812 governments every month. For the ones who are running their mouth about cost of governance that they're going to uh, bring down in one form or the other, you are, you are financing 812 governments every month. Where will you find the money to provide you know, uh, uh, any kind of uh, service to the, to the populace? 812. Do the arithmetic. 36 states, 704 local government areas, a humongous federal, federal government with uh, countless numbers of uh, ministries and uh, 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 MDAs. Then federal capital territory, 704. Each of them with their own bureaucracies. Each of the states will have a state house of assembly, maybe 20 or 30 members. They will have a uh, commissioners. They will have uh, all kinds of uh, other uh, uh, MDAs they create for themselves. Multiply it into 36. Everybody goes with their own convoy. Then you go to seven and four local government areas. Every month they gather in Abuja and share money. What are they doing with the money? The responsibility for doing things have been confiscated by the federal government. Section 6, Section 6C, Section 6, Subsection 6C of your constitution absorb the government of responsibility towards you. So all these 36 governors and seven and four local government area uh, 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 chairman that go to gather money every month, they don't owe you any obligation. Not to talk about the president or anybody else. And so it is to say that it is not parliamentary system or presidential system that is the issue. Because even if you go to parliamentary, the question is, has that taken care of the 36 states that we are saddled with to mm. finance? Has that taken care of the seven and seven local government areas we are saddled with to finance? How does that take care of the 68 items on exclusive list? So you see, it is being dishonest. You could say disingenuous, but it's just being plain dishonest because they know. Why is the discussion coming up now? That people are saying, let us go and rework the basis of the union or disperse from the union of death we have been trapped into. So please, please, let nobody, it's, it, it's marks of illiteracy. Then we see more of dishonest because of the people who are saying it, and in the time they are saying it, and they gain the backdrop of the campaign that has come to hit them in the face that we say we have no union with them. So they want to drag us into the uh, uh, rigmarole of uh, discussing that the uh, parliament. And we, I saw what was what's the name of this uh, quota professor, uh, uh, they say Angu Abulahi. I saw him speaking strongly that uh, it is by going to parliamentary that we, nobody is deceived. Our issue is not parliamentary or presidential. Our issue is whether we are in a union, and Bola, they raised it a long, long time ago. If we solve that question, that first question, by referendum, no other way, Nobody's going, no politician is going to discuss, decide that for anybody. It is the owners of the sovereignty by referendum that will resolve the question of whether we are in union or we're not in union. The, the amalgamation of 1914 is gone. The amalgamation of 1999 is what we are dismantling now. So let nobody come to say uh, our, our, our country, our democracy, our economy, unless we define that we, the we that is contained in that preamble. Who are that we? Who are those we? Is Yoruba part of that we? Is Igbo part of that we? Are you going to impose it on them like the British did? Unless we define that we. Don't come to talk about uh, our democracy or our economy or our country or our future. We have a union dispute we must resolve now. If we're not resolving it, I tell you the union is at an end. If it is on the basis of this falsehood, this forgery, that you are holding, holding, holding my sovereignty, holding all my economic assets, pointing guns at me because the, the, you, you are assigned monopoly of guns to yourself. You are assigned my economic asset to yourself. You are assigned my right to elect who govern me to yourself. So you have a neck. You have NEPA. It's not going to hold. Let us deal with first things first. When we are done with all of that, like a, a, a building that has to be decorated when you have a finished building it, that's when we begin to talk about system of uh, government. Let nobody introduce that type of distraction. It's, it's infuriating. You may think you are being smart. It's not going to catch. It's not going to wash. Two questions. Do we have a union? Are, are, we, are, we, are we still in any union at all? Hmm. Referendums. To resolve that. And that's why Nina's placed a five-point proposition on the table. Let us accept that we have not made this concession. 
Let us accept we have to decommission it wholesale, not any form of amendment. Let us accept we have wasted enough time since 1967 after Aburi. We haven't gone back to that discussion any meaningfully. And therefore, we say, no further national election so that we can deal with it immediately. Let us then invite the owners of the sovereignties. That's item four. To discuss the modalities of how they are going to go about it. That's a transition. You know, the modalities of how to discuss that matter now and resolve it, you know, in some way. Then in the fifth one, you make an announce a time-bound announcement after all the discussions are taking place to say, look, gentlemen, you are now addressing the global community. We have a problem. Our constitutional arrangements have been toppled and rearranged in a manner that uh, the, even the UN described it as a pressure cooker for injustice. That's how they discuss it. That's how the, the United Nations, uh, you know, uh, 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 rapport tool that was sent, Agnes Kalamat, that was sent to Nigeria to come to, you know, investigate the extrajudicial case. Was, there was blood all over the place, 2019, August. Agnes Kalamat's uh, rapport tool mission reported back that uh, Nigeria's constitutional arrangement was like, Pressure cooker for injustice. The, the whole world is seeing it. You are the only one pretending not to see it. But the people who live in it are not only seeing it, they are feeling it. They are, killed, they are, they are being killed in it. They are, being, they are being starved to death in it. They are, be, they are being chased out of their spaces, whether it's in the middle belt or even in Port The ones from the dotting circle are all over the world running away from you, from their country. So let us let us let us let us stop all this uh, nonsense. It can only make matters worse. The good will the good will to this to discuss to even discuss because this matter doesn't doesn't require any discussion any further. People are going to the right to self determination. Unfortunately for you, their sovereignty is inalienable to them as long as they have their land and their distinct ethnic uh, groups on their ancestral spaces. They don't need your permission to live. No, nope, they definitely don't need your permission to do what they need to do. Look at uh, case in point. Look at Haiti. What is going on? Similar things. When you allow bad things to fester and pretend like it doesn't concern you, <laughs> sooner or later it will concern you, and America will bring their armies to block their borders. <laughs> you can't come in. You cannot come in. And we're asking for us to move and do the right thing before these things explode in our faces. And people are like pretending and leaving it for a criminal call abuba for sahe again <laughs> in them everywhere when terrorists are now running your churches you know you're in trouble when ddbia are now being your pastor they are your pastors and telling you how to get to heaven you know you are in trouble when occult leaders are now in charge of your religious spaces you're not going anywhere <laughs>